in the verses that immediately precede our selected scriptural text for this morning, the Apostle Paul has just left Athens after meeting with the Council of Philosophers, teachers, historians, and others on Mars Hill or the Areopagus. Paul tells them as he walked around the city of Athens that he noticed that they had erected an idol and labeled it to an unknown God. Paul tells the Athenians that he knows their unknown God. And then he explains to them how their unknown God is the creator of all things. And how he raised Jesus from the dead which proves that Jesus is the Son of God. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection, some of them sneered, and others said, we will hear you again on this matter. So the Bible says, that Paul left Athens and went to the city of Corinth. Now, when Paul arrives in Corinth, we discover that he was alone. And Paul admits that when he arrives in the city of Corinth, that he is fearful. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul writes to the Corinthians, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. Why did Paul fear? Because he had a target on his back. Remember, brothers and sisters, the cities that he had preached in prior to Corinth, Paul was abused, beaten, and run out of town. Paul's past ministerial history involved trouble. And let me say right here that if you preach or testify of the sure enough gospel of Jesus Christ, you will make some enemies. I told you on last Sunday, that everybody does not want to hear your testimony about Jesus. Some people will oppose you. And some may even try to physically harm you because of their hatred of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul arrives in Corinth and he sees the wickedness in the city and he wrestles with the fact of what will happen to him in the city of Corinth for preaching the gospel. Well, the Bible says that Paul meets in the city, a husband and wife 
who were believers. Their names were Aquila and Priscilla. Isn't it good to know that God has a way of directing you to the right people at the right time when you need them the most. God calls Aquila and Priscilla and the Apostle Paul's paths to intersect. Not only were they fellow believers, they all had the same occupation. They were tent makers or leather workers. So the Bible says that Paul stayed with them and worked alongside of them while he stayed in the city of Corinth. As was it Paul's custom, when entering into a new city, the Apostle Paul would find the Jewish synagogue and attend on the Sabbath day for the purpose of trying to reason with the Jews and Greeks who were there that Jesus was the Messiah or the Christ. When Timothy and Silas, Paul's co-laborers in Christ, came and met Paul in Corinth, the Bible says that Paul focused his attention on trying to reach the Jews by convincing them that Jesus was the Messiah. And the Bible says that many of the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive to him. And not only to him, but to the message of the gospel. So the Bible says Paul, as a sign against them, shook the dust from his garments and said, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Am I in the book? Am I in the book? My brothers and sisters, have you ever run into a person who downright refuses to listen to anybody? Have you ever run into a person who thinks that they are the only one right. Even if they know that they are wrong, they are too stubborn to admit that they are wrong. Have you run? When I used to manage public housing, in Sanford, God had a resident there who got mad because someone parked in front of his house. Now you know the street is a public street. Whosoever will, let him come. I, as the housing manager, heard the ruckus. And I went over and I tried to explain to him that it was a public street. 
and that whoever got there first, yeah. even in front of your house, yeah. they could park. Yeah. But he was too stubborn yeah. to listen. Yeah. And he made the statement to me that he would die and go to hell before he would relent from his opinion. And guess what? He fell dead right there on the porch and went to hell. Lean up and tell you that, but don't you be too stubborn. Listen to me good. There are some people that will not accept what you have to say no matter what. There are some people who are determined to have their way in everything. There are some people who will try to put you on a guilt trip for their refusal to do what is right. I know I'm preaching in here today. Some of us here this morning have allowed family members and friends to cause us to feel guilty about the bad choices that they have made. But I'm here to liberate you today by telling you stop tripping and stop allowing guilt to consume you. Listen to me good. If you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth and it is rejected sometimes you have to shake the dust from your feet or your clothing and move on am I helping anybody the Bible says the apostle Paul shook off his clothes in protest against these unbelieving troublemakers. And he moved on to the Gentiles with the good news of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that even though Paul was rejected by many of the Jews. Some of them listened and accepted his teaching. And guess who believed? The Bible says that Crispus, who was the leader of the Jewish synagogue and his whole household believe. Wow, New Providence. What a major loss to the enemies of the kingdom of God. The synagogue leader, the one who did the order of service, the one who invited guest rabbis to speak. The one who took physical care of the synagogue has now changed his mind <laughs> and embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, New Providence and friends, you know that this made the Jewish leadership upset and angry. And listen, if you are a believer in Christ, it should be your hope 
that God continues to reach those who are under Satan's bondage and release them to freedom no matter who gets mad or angry about it. Hmm. So, y'all still got your Bibles over, right? The Bible says that Paul leaves the synagogue and sets up ministry next door at the house of Titus Justice, who was a Gentile worshiper of God. And the Bible says that many of the Corinthians believed Paul's word and were baptized. Now, now I, I told you that Paul admitted to the Corinthians that he came to them with great fear and trembling. Somewhere between verses 8 and 9 of our text, Paul must have experienced some strong opposition against him. The Bible does not tell us about the opposition that he faced, but we know that he was concerned over his safety. So the Bible says that one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and encouraged him to continue the work of ministry. The Lord says to Paul, do not be afraid. <laughs> oh, Lord. Paul, keep on speaking. Do not be silent. Brothers and sisters, Paul must have been wrestling with the idea of backing off from communicating the message of the gospel. He was considering becoming a silent partner toward the things of God. But God, somebody say, but God, in essence says to Paul, don't you allow anyone or anything to keep you from testifying about my goodness. Paul, did you forget that I am with you? I promised you to never leave you or forsake you. And because I am with you, and I am Lord over all. While you are here in the city of Corinth, no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. In other words, Paul, things are going to be different this time. <laughs> I, I know, Paul, that you have been abused and misused and run out of previous cities that you visited. But this time, <laughs> Things are going to be different. You won't have to fear for your life 
or worry about fierce opposition. This time, things will be different. I'm going to give you a brief rest from your enemies. And you will be able to win many souls to me because I have many people in this city who need to be saved. So just know, Paul, that things are going to be different this time. And as I go to my seat, let me encourage someone here today by letting you know that things are going to be different this time. I know in your past, you have been mistreated. In your past, you have been abused. In your past, you have been confused. And in your past, you've been used up. Seems like you have moved from one trouble into the next trouble. But sometimes, like the Apostle Paul, you spent your time in great fear and weakness and in trembling. But I'm here this morning to tell you that the Lord says he is with you and he has your back. He will protect you from the enemy's attack and provide you with what you need to live life in peace and prosperity. Lean over and tell your neighbor things are about to change for your good and things are going to be different this time. Come on, stand to your feet. Don't you assume that what happened in your past is going to come back immediately in your future. Because I'm here to tell you that the Lord says that things are going to be different this time. 